Hey guys, this is Chris from MixdownOnline.com. Uh, this week, Cubase 8.5 was released, and I just want to take the time to show you my favorite features that were added to this version of Cubase, and that will help you to speed up your workflow. So let's get to it. All right, so let's first look at the track management updates. So I am first gonna create some, uh, some group tracks. Uh, let's say, let's create five of them, name them bus and uh, there you go. So now they've been placed inside the group tracks folder, which is usually done by default. Uh, now I will create some audio tracks. Let's say I will create four mono tracks and name them elec git and now the good thing is i can actually select the output routing of these tracks uh, just before i create them so i will select the first bus so bus one so instead of going by default to the master output it will go to the uh the bus one or whatever channel i select for output routing um, now, another thing that is very, very cool is for the effects channel track. So let's say I'm gonna, let's say we create, uh, we wanna create a few reverbs just to set up a bunch of reverb tracks, effects tracks. So now you can actually create more than one effects track at a time. Um, so let's create three reverbs. So let's go into my reverb right here and uh, revelation. I'm just gonna name them verb and uh, so again instead of by default going to the master output i will select bus three and uh, now a new, another new feature is instead of having an effects channel track uh, created inside a folder we can now select uh, the option of creating that effect outside the folder uh, which is very useful because this way it will be created just below the selected track in the project window. So let's create these outside the default folder. And there you go. So my three reverbs are routed to the bus three and inserted just below the audio track I selected when creating the FX channel tracks. Yeah, and another feature that is, uh, that is okay, you know, which is not a big thing, but still uh, when you duplicate a track, okay, uh, so now instead of renaming that track copy of like it used to do, it just uh, renamed the track uh, adding the letter D uh, in parentheses. Now check this next feature. Uh, this is actually one of my favorites. You can now import the track from another project by staying in your current project. So you don't have to, uh, to open that old project to import the track. You can just stay in your project, use this feature and import whatever track you need. So let's try it out. Uh, let's go and uh, import right here and go into tracks from project. All right, so now I am gonna I am gonna select that project and open the project, and I'm just gonna select none and just import one track. So let's go for the lead vocal track. And there you go. the uh, The track was imported directly into my project. So let's have a listen. It's my condition, my complication, this... That's it. And the good thing is when you do the import, it does import the audio from that track and all the settings as well. So this is cool. So now, you know, I had a compressor on that track, uh, an insert, and, you know, the compressor is still there. So whatever you, in, you, you, add, you add into the inserts are going to be uh, imported at the same time. And same for the sends and, you know, the channel strip, whatever you have. Uh, all the settings will be imported at the same time. So that is a very, very, very cool feature from Cubase. Uh, now, another good feature is... Um, okay, let's select these tracks and uh, I'm just going to enlarge these. So now you have uh, on, on these tracks, you can toggle the time base between the musical and linear option, uh, but you can actually only do, uh, do the switch for one channel at a time. So even if I select everything, it will only do the switch 
with one channel at a time um so you know that sucks a bit so what they did right now is they introduced another feature so you actually select these tracks that you want to change uh the mode to and you go into pro i think it's project or edit yeah edit in the project logical editor and you select track operation this is good time domain so you have like several options here so i go into track operation and uh, you go into time domain and now it's set up to musical you can just uh, just set up to linear for example and apply and there you go everything has changed to the linear mode um, so again very cool very cool feature and uh, so again time saver so I like that one as well okay so now let's go and open our mix console and look at the new uh, hover controls uh, that they redesigned uh, for the sense the inserts and the EQs which makes uh, the control selection easier and you can now choose to, to hover with your mouse uh, to work with the, the controls or to uh, to work with a static control instead. So if you want to do so, you just uh, right click on insert, select show insert as, and then select plugin names and insert controls. And now when we open inserts, you see you have static controls, which takes a bit more room. But you know, if you like that, you have it. So now, another update with the locator this time. Um, now you have uh, two layers on the, uh, uh, on the locator. So you can, like you usually do, you select your uh, in and outs. And uh, if you want to cycle your, uh, your, your, a few bars with the locator, uh, you can actually select, select the cycle button on the transport or you click on the first layer. And by clicking on that layer, it will activate the cycle option like this and the lower layer of the transport is for zooming in and zooming out with your mouse so that's simple so first layer you activate the cycle option and second layer you zoom in you zoom out with your mouse now another feature that was added is that you can now um, create a separate locator for the punch-ins and the punch-outs within the main locator. Okay, so now my locator is uh, is covering three bars and I want to punch in and out on the second bar only. So to do so, I'm going on my transport, activate my uh, punch-in and punch-out. And now you can see the red locator appearing on top, which is my punch-in and outs. So I am going to move this red locator to the second bar just to cover the second bar only there you go all right so now i'm just going to select my audio track and let's try this out recording out and loop punch in punch out and loop so very cool so that is again uh very practical and easy to work with uh, so that's going to help you out with your punch-ins and punch-outs if you do a lot of them. Uh, now, another feature that is uh, very, very cool. Um, it's the edges. The edges of uh, the mixer, the mix console, and the project window. Uh, they added a few options here. So if you go on the right on the top of the window, you see, you know, right there, you just leave your mouse there and these options show shows up. So you can actually just add them on or remove them very simple so if you click on the right side here you have um, the rack the racks that you can bring in and out so you know it's just a faster way to to get to that uh, rack option here uh, instead of going into the uh, setup window layout and so it's just it's just a bit faster and same for the left side. You have your inspector in and out. And if you got the bottom, the cord pad in and out. Okay, so this is this is cool. This is a fast way to uh, to get to these these options. Uh, let's go on our mix console. And same thing here. You have your views uh, again, very uh, 
a fast way to, to get to these options. And on the left side, you have the channel selector in and out. On the right side, you have the control room meter in and out. Okay, let me bring this down a bit. It's a bit annoying. Uh, so I'm just gonna go and uh, channel strip, meter bridge. And there you go. Okay. Uh, so, you know, these options are very cool. Uh, again, f simple to use. A fast way to get to uh, to the layout uh, layout options of these windows. All right, so now let's look at another feature. Um, they added a hotspot on every segment just to uh, to be able to duplicate easily. Uh, so that duplicate hotspot uh, very easy to find. Just go on the edge of that uh, the right side of every segment, and you can click, and you can basically just duplicate that segment by uh, dragging your mouse towards the right or the left. And there you go, you have your your segments duplicated. So you can actually select more than one and duplicate these selected segments if you want, and it's gonna do the same. Uh, this is good for audio and MIDI tracks. And uh, so let's try it with a MIDI track, same thing, very simple. Um, so again, that's gonna speed up your workflow for sure. Uh, now the drum editor, let's go and take a look. So now I have a few notes here in the uh, drum editor just for uh, the sake of this example. So a very cool feature is right here. If you click on that drum visibility agent, you have a few, you have several uh, options. There's uh, the one I like the most is the show drum sounds with events. So if you click on that, it will remove everything that you are not using, but it will keep all the sounds that you're working on. And you can also select the show drum sounds in use by instrument, uh, which will actually only show what's available uh, within that uh, instrument. But uh, just note that uh, this feature is only available for VST3 instruments. Um, so if you're not using a VST3 instrument, it's gonna be grayed out. Now, if I just click on this one and I wanna reverse the uh the bass drum bring the bass drum to the bottom i can do so by reverse drum sound list and that will just reverse the drum sound list as it says and uh so if you you know like it better this way that could be a very good option uh now another very cool option is uh on the visual uh side so you know we're always used to see on the drum in the uh, drum editor the small diamond uh, right here for uh uh, for the notes, so we can actually change that to regular MIDI uh, events. Uh, so um, if you just have to click here, the show note length right here, and there you go. So let's keep it this way. Uh, I'm just gonna close this one, this down for now, and I'm gonna go and open my my regular MIDI event right here. So now there's a new option you can use to create your MIDI notes. Uh, you can actually just keep your selection tool and just double click and there you go you create your note so you don't need to go and select your pencil tool anymore you can if you want but there's no you know there's uh, you can do it by using the selection tool so if you double click to create your midi note and you hold your second click there's going to be other options you'll be able to use like uh, for example if you go just by uh, up and down for example uh, you're going to be working on your velocity if you hold your second click and you just go by on the right side, you just drag, you're gonna work on the length of the MIDI note. If you uh, hold your second click again and you click on Alt, at the same time, you're gonna be working on the pitch of that note, okay? So second click, up and down is the velocity. If you drag to the right, you're gonna work on the length. If you click on Alt, you're gonna work on the pitch, okay? And if you click on Shift, you're gonna be able to move uh, from right to left your MIDI notes, but it's gonna be snapped to the grid. So if you wanna move uh, the note without being snapped, just, by, just double click and hold your second click uh, and click on the Command key, and you'll be able to uh, work on the length of the uh, the note without being snapped to the grid. But for that, you need to click on the command key to do so. Uh, you can do the same with 
the position of the note. So you keep your finger on, you click on shift and you click on command and you're gonna be able to move the position of your note without being snapped to the grid. So very cool feature and uh, we can do the same with the drum, the drums actually. A uh, very cool feature here is if you, I'm just gonna bring this one here. No, actually I'm just gonna create one by double clicking, keep my finger in and if I drag it to the right, Okay, instead of uh, working on the length, it's going to be duplicating that note. This is only on the drum editor window that you're going to be able to do so. So all the other options work the same, but this one, if you drag, you'll be able to just duplicate that, uh, that note, which is again, very fast, very simple and very useful. So that's it for the MIDI side of Cubase 8.5. All right, so now let's look at the media bay. Uh, so, you know, to access your media bay, you can actually click on media and media bay. And there you go, you have it. But you, we can have it in front of us by, uh, uh, by showing the racks. So I'm just going to go on my right side and select racks. And there you go. If on the media bay tab, we have all the new options. So we have access to the instruments installed by uh, Steinberg. And uh, we have uh, loops and samples. Um, we have even more, which is a lot of presets that we can work with. Um, so let's go and select the instruments uh, tab right here. And I don't know, I'm just going to go and open Retrolog. And uh, let's open the new one. Um, let's try this one. So if you select a sound, you're going to be able to listen to that sound before loading it. So in your project, so there's that small keyboard right below that you can just click. So you can actually just select some sounds, different sounds and try them out. So trying sounds using your mouse is not very practical. Uh, so the other option we have is you click on the computer keyboard input. So this will actually activate your keyboard, uh, your computer keyboard to, uh, to try the sound. So let's try that. Very simple. Okay, so when you're happy with the sound you want, double click. And there you go, your sound is in your project as an instrument track uh, with the VST loaded. So you can actually edit your sound, uh, do whatever you want, use your regular controller and you're good. All right, so now let's go and select a drum loop. I'm just gonna go in this bank and uh, let's listen to this one. So same thing here, you just click, click on play and you can listen to the drum loop. Now, if you want it to start by itself, activate this one. So every time you select a loop, it's gonna start playing. All right, so now if you want to match the, uh, the drum loop you're listening to, to the BPM of your project, you need to click on this option right here, align beats to project. So uh, it's gonna basically uh, match the, the speed, the BPM to your project. So let's uh, listen to this uh, drum loop at 100 BPM while my project is at uh, 120. So there you go, very simple. Um, now, if you want another thing we can do is we can actually um, activate that option, wait for project play. So the, uh, the loop is going to start playing when you're going to press on play on your project. So this is going to be, uh, this is going to give you the chance to try the loops in your projects, uh, within your songs, the speed of the, uh, uh, the song you're working on. So it's going to be easier for you to, uh, to select a very good loop to match your song. So let's uh, click on play and you see it plays the loop we selected. Okay, so now let's say you like this one. Um, and uh, so you can just drag it. You wanna keep it, you drag it, and it's gonna create a brand new audio track with the loop in it. 
and it's going to be matched to the uh, BPM of your song. So this one is 120. So now that drum groove uh, that was 100 BPM originally is now 100, uh, 120 BPM. So let's listen to it. There you go, very simple. Now the loop is in your project linked to your BPM. Uh, so this is uh, this is a simple way to work with Media Bay in Cubase 8.5. So the last feature I want to talk to you about is automation points uh, right here. So I just did a small uh, automation on a drum loop. Uh, so basically here in Cubase 8, if you select uh, several automation points, you get that gray area uh, and that you can move. Uh, but you cannot move that gray area over some unselected uh, automation points, unfortunately. So that's the case for Cubase 8. Now in Cubase 8.5, you can select some automation points and uh, you get that same gray area that you can move around. But this time uh, you can move that gray area wherever you want on the automation lane, uh, regardless of the other automation points that are not selected. So that gives you a lot of freedom and more flexibility working on the automation lane. Yeah, so there's a lot more features in uh, this version of uh, Cubase, but these are the features that I think uh, can speed up your workflow and that I uh, that I actually like the most. So I hope that helps. Uh, feel free to comment. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. And you can go on my website, mixdownonline.com and get your free ebook. See you soon.